Welcome back to Station Ears, and I thought we'd do some miscellaneous stuff this episode, just get, to get a few things out of the way, just because we've got a few updates from the um, the various patches that have been going on over the last few days. Let's just cancel the depressurize and head down to our furnace room, shall we? Um, let me just turn off power reasons. Yep. <laughs> just saving a little bit of power, just let the, uh, the batteries recoup the charge because uh, last episode well my last episode the episode before we had a clock going that really depleted things yeah i wanted to come down here and just improve this a little bit or at least um after looking at some information so at the moment we're actually only using 85 watts because this generator circuit is off until i revisit that and we've got plenty of power what i'm going to do is actually simplify this or at least hopefully this will simplify it let me just turn off uh this one and we've just got one logic reader at the moment, which is reading the Arc 1 export slot, slot occupant. But there is a new state. So if we get the uh, tool here out and we go to idle, you'll see its idle state is 1. OK, so there's nothing coming through. It is on. And instead, we're just going to write back to it. So it's going to read this Arc 1 reader import. It's not an import anymore, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to write back to arc one with the activate button. So there it goes. And it's going to keep pushing the activate button as long as the um, furnace says it's idle. So whenever there's something that comes into it, maybe that will work. We'll give that a try. Let me just try it on this one as well. Let me just turn off these two and then I can just change this one to idle. OK. <laughs> sort of random activation but more importantly if you look over here you see we're not actually using any more power for doing this and in fact we're using less power because we have less of these circuits going so i can recoup a couple of these if this is going to work so let's actually go and get some ores and see whether it's going to work shall we um let's hope it does <laughs> nice simplification if it does let's grab some i don't know um some iron um, in fact, yeah, let's, let's put a bunch of iron and one piece of copper through, shall we? And I think just to make this go quite fast, what I'm actually going to do is just as we've done before in the test, we're just going to, um, let's say split one, split one, split one, split one, drop that and pick you up, pop you over there for a second. So... There we go. We can grab one for there, one for there. And these two are going to keep on trying to activate. So let's try and insert all of you, shall we? OK, are we going to get a result? That's one G. That's two and that's three. So, yeah, works absolutely fine. And that's actually simpler than this first system. So well done for adding that idle state. And these are just going to glow on and off, which is kind of a cool effect by itself. I quite like it. So I guess we can put uh, stuff in there and we'll get stuff out. Uh, or at least our processed ores. Let's just grab both of you. One, two and three. And are they going to go on permanently? Or are they going to say they're idle? Interesting. Okay, so that's not quite right because, well, they are processing, but they just continue to go on and off. I wonder whether we actually lose any for that. If we don't lose any, I don't care about it because I'm not going to be around here. Uh, however, if we do, then that's more of an issue. So we've got copper, copper, and iron, copper. That looks like it's make, making up 50 copper. We've got iron times 59 times 1. So hopefully in here, it's saying nothing to smell. Oh, hang on. No, we got 49. So yeah, we're getting the entire result out. And aside from the noise that they make, <laughs> they're working pretty well. So I'm just going to turn those off for a second. Just the reader state, and that should stop it. Although I'm getting that humming noise. You can probably, guys can probably hear that as well. But anyway, we've got something that will go and uh, it will go and work. So, yeah, we could do that. That's uh, a nice addition. OK, so we're going to fix our battery backup situation or rather our smart generator system. And this solution comes courtesy of a 
uh, commenter called Pompage uh, about a day ago or probably two days before this video. And a really nice little solution that I like very much indeed. So well done to you. I'm just going to pop some circuitry away, then we'll con concentrate on this. So we're going to need two specific pieces of electronics here. Uh, we're going to need a select unit. Um, and we're going to need a, um, let's just, where do I want to put the select? Let's put the select down here. And we're going to want to compare unit up there. Okay. Now we're going to need to change a few of the settings. So let's just turn them on for a second. They're going to complain. So for this select unit, we're going to need to look at something that's going to change between zero and one. Okay, so in this case, we're going to look at a compare unit, compare unit output zero and one. So in this case, if we have less than, we can test if the current ratio, which is charge actual, yep, is less than a certain amount. So we could just set it to charge minimum. Uh, where are you, charge minimum? Okay, so is it less than charge minimum? No, it's not. That's all straightforward, I hope. Now on this one, we could then say, hey, let's look at this compare unit and let's just call it, I don't know, um, for argument's sake, furnace compare. And let's call this furnace select, shall we? Just so we've got an idea of these. And I'm probably gonna need a writer as well. So let me actually just place that down. Logic writer that I'll do for now. Okay, so this is going to want a zero or one on an input, and it's going to take a value and assign it uh, to itself, if you like, so we can read it off, depending on that input. So if we look at this, is charge actual less than charge minimum? So let's look at furnace compare for this. Okay, currently that's zero. So we can then select what we want to output. So we can say charge minimum. And charge maximum. Uh, I've gone too far. <laughs> there we go. So right now it's setting itself to 0 0.3. Okay, now this is the bit of the tricky bit that you may not be used to with electronics. I certainly wasn't. So well done, Pompeish. Um, you can set them to each other to create something called a Schmidt trigger. I'm not into electronics just yet, so I don't know what that is, but I will happily accept this. <laughs> so we need to hook these up to each other so that it's going to test against something else. We're going to test. Um, let me just actually um, set this up. So we're going to test the furnace select here. Is it less than furnace select? Where are you? OK, is it less than furnace select? No, because it's doing the same thing as over here now. It's saying 0 0.3, that's what it's testing. However, over here, now we're looking at this. As soon as it hits 0 0.3, this is gonna to change to one. When it changes to one, this select is gonna change its output to 0 0.8, okay? That's quite important. At this point, this one's now gonna be comparing charge actual less than 1.8. So what's going to happen is as soon as it drops past 0 0.3, we can read this to see if it's zero or one. If it's zero, then as it is now, we don't want the furnace on. As soon as it turns to one, which it will do when it passes 0 0.3, we then can, this is going to trip, flip over. This is going to stay one because it's still less than 0 0.8. And then it's going to keep on going with the, the generator until it hits 0 0.8. And as soon as it passes 0 0.8, it's going to flip back to zero, at which point this is going to flip to its other input, which is 0 0.3, and around the cycle goes. So it'll start charging below 0 0.3, stop charging above 0 0.8, which is exactly what we want. So in this case, we're going to get the furnace compare as the input. There we go. And output is going to be our generator. And uh, not the mode, not the lock on. And that should be that. We've got 33 coal in there. So as soon as this drops below 0 0.3, and actually we can probably change this to 0 point, maybe five, five <laughs> as a test. Um, let me see if I can do that five. Oh, uh, it's probably, 
Can I actually get smaller values than that? I thought I could. Well, in fact, actually, if we change this to 0.6, everything should trigger. Uh, there it goes. It's on. So that should start charging until it hits 0.8, at which point it should stop charging. 63, 64, 65. And of course, this is much more power efficient. We've got three of these units instead of one computer. A computer takes... Um, Oh, there it goes. The computer takes 200 watts. We're currently using 115. And I think I was using either 55 or 65 before that. So it's four times less. And there it goes. It's off. And it's going to drop back down again. But I'm going to set this quite low. So I'm going to set this down to 0 0.1 in my case. And then uh, 0 0.9 in this case. What I'm guarding against is if we flip this on and off, just, just, <laughs> just with this switch... It uses a coal as soon as it actually goes on, if I remember rightly. So we can't just use something like these furnaces where these can constantly be activating just to top it off or on some kind of timer. We may be able to do a timer, but it would be much harder to figure out exactly how much power we got out of this and how often to hit that timer. With this, it will regulate. And because we've got a minimum and maximum value, we've got 10% spare at the bottom and the top. Well, mainly the top is the one that I'm concerned about just to make sure that we don't waste the last bit of coal. And the bottom is more so that, um, you know, we're always going to have the furnaces available. It's never going to hit actually zero. So I hope that's, hope that's actually clear. This may spawn a bunch of comments on people going, what is going on with these two? Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully it's straightforward. They're referring to the, each other and this select unit is just changing the comparison we're testing against. Hopefully that's clear. All right, onward. Now, I did have some commenters pointing this out, and this is absolutely correct, well spotted. I started to build another row, not thinking too much about the distance between these, just looking to save this heavy cable. I thought, yeah, I'll just flip these around, it'll be fine. Eh, not so much. Um, in early morning, because this is occluded by these panels, you can see all oh, they're at the same angle, um, Rocket Works and Dean Hall are actually working out the, the solar, um, if you like, the solar input to these actually quite correctly. They're checking shadows. I wonder if my shadow actually stops that. Does it? 494. Yeah. <laughs> They're not modeling player shadows, but they are seemingly modeling shadows of everything else. So this isn't going to be any problem apart from close to the horizon, but I don't quite like that it actually is a problem. So what I'm probably going to do, I, the suggestion was just to keep extending these in a line. And I don't like that as much just because it will get huge off there in the distance. Um, I kind of prefer an array. So what I probably am going to do with those is um, I don't mind sacrificing the first few minutes of the day to a shadow or a really long shadow, but it just means if we move this line about oh out to here or so, as soon as it gets, or even uh, we can, you know, um, actually, I was going to say, can we map them above each other, but then you get problems at noon. <laughs> So, yeah, we can't do that exactly that way. But yeah, if we put another line out here, the, the shadow will actually be a very, very low angle and, uh, you know, maybe five, six blocks away uh, in the future. That will just help, I think. And, uh, of course, we can expand the uh, the solar panels too far. I'm just hopeful that there isn't um, some kind of power loss simulation going on that, that could be a game system that gets added. There's lots of realistic game systems, so I'm trying not to go completely kind of cheesing things. So uh, an array might actually be good. And that actually will be another use once we get to it. Um, I need to go gold is the main problem with solar panels, of course. I've only got 22 grams of gold or whatever grams actually equals in this game. And um, that's actually nowhere near enough. I need quite a bit more gold and ha finding it is, a, is actually tough on this particular seed, this particular world. So as soon as I grab more gold, I'll put them in. And of course, gold is also what you use to construct these heavy cables. They're copper and gold. So I think when once I get there, I'm going to construct um, a nice sort of system outboard, outboard of the batteries. 
and then we'll have to do a balancing system maybe um or have one array go one array line going into one battery and another one going into the other something along those lines will be fine and of course we're uh, we're fine on the inside as we already know about just thought i'd mention that because uh well done to the commenters for spotting it as they seem to spot all kinds of things <laughs> in my face oh dear yes um the air conditioners, um, I did have a couple of comments. I haven't tested them yet, but I did comment saying that if you use pollutants as, um, as the waste, maybe, that you could get the power usage right down. I don't know about that, but it might be worth someone testing. And, of course, I'm not going to replant my, uh, the, my remaining crops. Hopefully, I'm just waiting to see if the, the bug with this air conditioner is fixed so it doesn't get jammed into the so kind of a pseudo-on state where... The switch is on but you can't ever switch it back on without rebuilding it again i don't want to have to do that um but otherwise yeah the hydroponics will work fine i'm sure you'll be able to do it in your own builds the other thing about the air conditioner i may have meant hopefully i mentioned in the last episode if i didn't is that it can take quite a lot of power so uh once i get some gold i'll be in a better position to extend the solar array which will mean that i will have enough power perhaps permanently to run the air conditioner and of course uh, we can run this loop again. I'm just doing this because it was more efficient to uh, this. This this part of it is pressurized quite a to one atmosphere, so it tends to lose the heat quite a lot faster when you do that. But of course, I don't want to run that in a circle so that uh, the heat will radiate, but the gas can be reused around that circle. Okay, what's next? Okay, and that's it for today's episode. A bit of a short one again um, after that monster forty minute episode that I did for I think it was the clock. Um, to keep it keep it to an average of about half an hour but a bit of a shorter one today just some miscellaneous updates to keep everything more efficient and nicely running throughout our base i want more gold <laughs> i want more gold i need more gold to build more base oh well what can you do anyway hopefully i'll see you next episode hope you enjoyed this one with a couple of quick changes for our furnace setup and um yeah we'll see you next time thanks for watching